Welcome to the NTN Nightly, I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. A seamless system for the management of the public transport sector is accelerating. The Cabinet of Ministers approves the establishment of a cannabis commission. Residents of Sufria with interest in the yachting sector are benefiting from a comprehensive training program. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. The government of St. Lucia is moving to revolutionize the public transport sector. The Department of Transport, through the e-government system, is modernizing the licensing process. Databases will soon be integrated. Renewal of driver's licenses will be done online, among other transactions. Janelle Norville reports that the long-advocated demerit system will also come into force. The government of St. Lucia remains committed to the modernization of the public service. This includes ensuring that government services are accessible to all St. Lucians. In that vein, the government is seeking to modernize the licensing process. Minister for Economic Development, Housing, Urban Renewal, Transport and Civil Aviation, Honorable Guy Joseph, explained that the processes at the Department of Transport will soon be fully automated and citizens will be able to access the services online. Additionally, the current systems will be integrated so as to allow law enforcement to access relevant information to conduct their duties effectively. We are going also to go to the demerit point system where um, based on the traffic offenses and the tickets and all of the things would be um, reflected. So when you come to pay your driver's license, if you have a ticket that is outstanding, it's going to be flagged. Also, um, what we are trying to do is to get the system fully integrated with the police, the court system and everything so that um, there will be one seamless system where we would be able to monitor what is happening within transport in general. Um, vehicles that have um, the proper license and proper registration and the proper insurance, all of these things would be integrated into the system so that if the police pulls over a vehicle, they'll be able to get all the data on that vehicle immediately. The meeting, which was chaired by Minister Joseph, was attended by a number of stakeholders. Acting Director of Public Sector Modernization, Marlon Nassis, indicated that the Public Sector Modernization Project is very important and consists of the implementation of a digital government platform, which focuses on providing access to 30 government services online. As the catalyst, the project has commenced with the Department of Transport and will seek to develop an application for applying for driver's licenses online. Right now there is a, a certain level of frustration dealing with going to the Ministry of Transport and having to wait many, many weeks and months in, in some circumstances um, to attain a new driver's license or renewal of a driver's license. <clears throat> so um, our vision is, um, is to allow for that process to take only a few days. Um, so we are at the point where we have gone through the ASIS analysis. We've just made a presentation to the, to the minister on the to be, a, the, to, the to be processes and um, we'll begin the requirements gathering for the system um, sometime in the next two weeks. So um, St. Lucians have, you know, we're very excited for this project and I think um, once this system is implemented, you'll have a seamless process for um, the average St. Lucian to be able to interface with government um, on, a, on a daily basis. Crimson Logic's country manager for St. Lucia, Alana Maria Ali, provided some insight into the online process. The process would be where you log online using a unique digital ID. Once you log online, it will authenticate that you are indeed a citizen of St. Lucia. Um, the technicalities of that I will not get into it so once you log in you will be then taken then you'll be able to navigate through the platform to the driver's Ministry of Transport module there you will be able to select which service is applicable to you once you click on that service that is applicable to you so for example if you want to renew your driver's license um, you just click on that link, Renew Driver's License. The information will be pre-populated because you would have already been a registered driver. And then it would be, allow you now to verify your information, give you an option to either a, keep your current photo 
or B, upload a new photo. I mean, the, the, the details of, of this is not um, confirmed yet, but this is what we have presented to the minister today. The license renewal process is expected to be available online by January 2020. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. The Government of St. Lucia, through the Disaster Vulnerability Reduction Project, DVRP, has signed a contract with Alpha Engineering and Construction Limited to undertake a comprehensive assessment of the hydrologic and hydraulic conditions of the Denry Village and Soufre, including for Saint Jacques. Communications Officer for the DVRP, Lucius Doxery reports. The three communities in question, which were severely impacted after Hurricane Thomas in 2010 and the Christmas Eve trough of 2013, are particularly vulnerable to flash flooding and landslides, which have led, among other things, to alteration and heavy sedimentation of water courses, consequently threatening sections of major roads, residences, bridges, utilities, schools and farmlands. Speaking at the contract signing ceremony attended by key experts of the consulting firm, staff of the Department of Infrastructure and the Project Coordination Unit, Permanent Secretary in the Department of Infrastructure, Ports and Energy, Ivor Daniel, noted the timeliness of the consultancy in light of recent storms which have wreaked havoc on sister Caribbean territories. We started this comprehensive assessment of the hydrological and hydrology. Um, of assessment of Soufre and Fonseca as well as Denry. These communities have been impacted. So since then, and through the DVRP, we've been attempting to carry out this assessment. We started with a previous consultant. This was not successful, it got to a certain stage, but we've been eagerly awaiting the continuation of this exercise. So these studies are very critical to us and the Bahamas, you can tell what happened in the Bahamas now, and it's critical for us as a country now in building our resilience that we go in there and know what is there, design, give us give the necessary engineering design so we can at least now um, put in some preventative measures and even in, in, in a lot of the instances our adaptation measures. Team leader of Alpha Engineering and Construction Limited, Farzi Khan, says the Trinidad-based company, which, by the way, has ensured that 50% of its key experts are St. Lucians, has an unrivaled range of competent specialists specializing in environmental assessment and geotechnical surveys. Khan says the company is keen to provide a climate resilient solution to ensure that residents of the communities realize the fullest benefits of the financial investment. For the last five or six years throughout the other Caribbean islands and we'll bring that experience to bear here. We have just completed a similar exercise in St. Vincent which was also decimated by a storm similar to Thomas. We have the capacity in terms of experience, uh, technical capacity, and with our local partners doing the social assessment as well as the topographical surveys, this will occur well for the output of the final designs. Whereas we would review all the existing reports, we take nothing for granted and we redo all the analyses that are required in terms of the hydrology and hydraulics in order to establish what would be the design that are required in order to mitigate against flooding in the future in the three areas specified under this project. The comprehensive assessment of the hydrologic and hydraulic conditions of Denry Village and Soufre, including Fort Saint Jacques, complements ongoing island-wide slope stabilization and drainage works as the government of St. Lucia, through the DVRP, seeks to increase the country's resilience to weather-related disasters. The consultancy, which kicks off on September 16, 2019, is expected to culminate by February 2020. The Department of Infrastructure will provide technical oversight throughout the duration of the consultancy. Realizing the change in tide towards the decriminalization and regulation of cannabis by regional and international counterparts, 
St. Lucia is intent on positioning itself to take advantage of the transformative economic benefits in the cannabis industry while simultaneously addressing human rights and public health issues. Cabinet at its meeting held on the 29th of July 2019 approved the establishment of a commission to review and make recommendations on the regulatory framework for cannabis. The Minister of Commerce, International Trade, Investment, Enterprise Development and Consumer Affairs, Honorable Bradley Felix, is spearheading this initiative, given the investment potential and consequential positive impact on GDP. The Cannabis Commission is chaired by Mr. Michael Gordon QC, attorney at law, and held its inaugural meeting on Friday, September 6, 2019. The Commission consists of representatives from the Attorney General's Chambers, Invest in Lucia, Ministry of Commerce, Ministry of Agriculture, Ministry of Health, Ministry of Home Affairs, Ministry of Equity, Cannabis Movement, Leader of the Opposition, National Youth Council, St. Lucia Christian Council, Ionola Council, and the Advancement of Rastafari. The next steps for the Commission in the next few months are to finalize operational activities and work plans, schedule meetings, and consultations with national stakeholders, NGOs, and the general public to gain insight on their sentiment and concerns and share the proposed approach on the establishment of a well-regulated cannabis industry in St. Lucia. Residents of Sufre with interest in the yachting sector are benefiting from a training program designed to assist participants in deriving a livelihood from the sector. The government of St. Lucia, in collaboration with the St. Lucia Social Development Fund, launched the Maritime Training Program for the yachting sector. The program, which targets young men in Sufre, more commonly known as the Boat Boys, aims to build and expand the capacity of the Sufre Yacht Service Association, SISA, in order to generate financial benefits. The project was co-funded by the Government of St. Lucia and the Caribbean Development Bank via the Basic Needs Trust Fund. Jackie Ale is the project officer at the SSDF. With the collaboration of a diverse group of stakeholders, the beneficiaries of SISA will receive both soft skills and underwater training in areas such as maritime law and technology, basic navigation, um, radio voice procedures, safety anchoring, etc. I can go through all the areas. The community tourism training is CVQ level one certified and will cover topics such as customer service, personal entrepreneurial strategies, and dealing with persons of various um, and diverse cultures, etc. This training, when completed, will assist SISA with the marketing of their services and, in extension, the community of Sufre. Some 45 persons are currently benefiting from the maritime training program, which comes at an estimated cost of 125,000 US dollars. Parliamentary representative for Sufre, Honorable Herod Stanislas, commended the participants for recognizing the need to be a part of this initiative. For too long, we have had complaints, we have had issues of harassment, of um, um, foul language, of um, theft, pollution of the seas, the waters, and a whole lot of negativity. And I'm certain that they have understood the negative impact of this on their livelihoods and they are going to change their attitudes and their ways of conducting business on the way forward so that this sector, the yachting sector, continues to bring economic benefits to Sufre and Fosaja. The Maritime Training Program for the Yachting Sector was launched on Thursday, September 12, 2019. From the Government Information Service, I am Anicia Antoine reporting. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. You think you're invincible? You think it can only happen to certain people? Yeah, yeah man, be Think. Glove up when you love up.
Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Thanks, Misha. Welcome to your weekend update from Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. The 2019 segment of the 2019-2020 school sports competition calendar continued Wednesday and Thursday with registration for basketball, football, and netball competitions. Secondary and tertiary schools physical education teachers are due to meet with officials of the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports at the Ministry's conference room Monday afternoon from 1 p.m. Under-15 and under-19 competitions due to commence soon following the outcome of Monday's meeting. It will be the turn of primary school's PE teachers on September 24, 2019 from 9.30 a.m. also at the Ministry's conference room. One of the organizers of the Caribbean Children Charity Shield football tournament sees lots of positives in the competition that caters for the development of marginalized youth in the Caribbean. One of the organizers of the Caribbean Children Charity Shield football tournament sees lots of positives in the competition that caters for the development of marginalized youth in the Caribbean. Trisha Brown says she has seen great improvement since the involvement of a team from the Boys Training Center in St. Lucia. The boys are one of the, from the training center, is one of the games that I want to see because from the time we met them, they have grown, seeing the same, some of the same boys here today, I have seen a great improvement in them from when we first met them in St. Lucia. We want to continue to work with the Boys Training Center here in the Caribbean Children Charity Shield Soccer Classic and as well as the management with the training center. We have a team similar to the Boys Training Center from Barbados and as I said, those were boys that were rejected. No, no club wanted them. They um, couldn't even afford, most of the clubs here could not afford the, the, um, the cost of airfare and stuff like that. And they would have worked hard in terms of fundraising events and just to make sure that they get here. We have boys that, they, that this is the first time that they even have a passport. Ms. Brown is happy that the tournament provides an outlet for these young people to showcase their talent and build self-esteem. And that's how we close on your weekend edition of updates from Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. St. Lucia continues to forge ties with countries across the globe. On August 27, 2019, the government of St. Lucia and the government of Nepal established diplomatic relations and on August 28, 2019, the government of St. Lucia and the Republic of Rwanda established similar relations. These relations seek to promote mutual understanding and strengthen the friendship and cooperation between the countries. The relations are guided by the principles of the United Nations Charter and international law particularly the respect and promotion of international peace and security, equality among states, due respect for national sovereignty and territorial integrity, independence and international treaties, and non-interference in internal affairs of the states. Signing on behalf of the government of St. Lucia was His Excellency Ambassador Cosmos Richardson, the permanent representative of St. Lucia to the United Nations. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Parmas Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Aquarium. When the authority of the heads of government of the OECS and its other ministerial councils meet and adopt policies for the organization, they rely on the OECS Commission to transform these into action. The OECS Commission is the secretariat of the organization, a grouping of officials headed by a director general mandated to implement the decisions of the governments but also empowered to make recommendations on the strategic directions of the organization. The OECS Commission organizes meetings, prepares budgets, conducts research, undertakes projects, negotiates for and represents the OECS member states. It is organized along several components. 
There are the commissioners from each member state who along with the Director General form the commission that oversees the work programs. There are also technical divisions with specialized units between them as well as diplomatic missions in Brussels and Geneva. All these complement each other to make the OECS Commission the engine of regional integration in the Eastern Caribbean. The OECS has a proud past and together we are working towards a brighter future for all our citizens. For more information visit www.oecs.org Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. Monsieur Tanisha, Monsieur Madame du Département qui nous responsabilité pour information en gouvernement sur le CI GIS, à son député télévision nationale pays à NTN, à Présato Nouvelle Acquéol, Présato Primus Hutchinson. Trois groupes ou évadés à Gouan la place Castri, qui ont entré en finissement et en étonnement, qui ont bâclé conduit projet de compétition des affaires touristiques régionales. Et tout le monde qui dit oui pour yon semaine entièrement, c'était pour renforcer la capacité de ces rivières là à effort pour faire un compliant. Et puis l'initiative pour aussi garder la place là et aussi les autres places qui ont loin. Et tout le monde a trouvé facilité par le ministère des Affaires touristiques. Officier des Affaires et Communications, un projet de la Tech La Fontenade, a fait ce moment-là qui est tout le monde qui a agrandi les produits touristiques qui sont ici qui ont fait et qui expliqué qui ça a fait. C'est pour montrer ce que vous la manière à faire la place qu'on a opéré dans l'autre pays, la terre, et que c'est une manière de spécialiser à ces divers qui ont fait pour les étrangers qui ont visité. On dit que ce qui a fait est possible pour ceux qui ont visité, ni ont une bonne expérience et par conséquent, ils ont dépassé plus. Durant ces cinq jours et trois mois, ce que vous avez plusieurs leçons nouvelles, la tenue présentation par Bureau of Standards. Export Solution, Belfond, Active, Tivet. Tout ça, pour ces revendeurs là comprendre plus à ce bon service, bonne qualité, et bon management de business, et relation et puis pratique. Il y en a ces revendeurs là Sylvia Cauldron, qui a pu être demandé pour porter un pile bonne information et éducation. J'ai ajouté qu'il y a quoi toutes les revendeurs à payer à te supposer à ce statement ça là pour comprendre plus mais manière pour opérer un business à de bonne façon et pour ménager quand mettre un business. C'est vrai là d'accord qui l'a toujours ni l'air pour yo et pour faire quoi yo particulièrement l'air où on l'a encouragé et puis pratique. C'est vrai là où il s'ouvre certificat pour participation yo. À peu près 40 les officiers publics qui plus avancés en garde vous êtes présentement qu'à suivre yo pour gagner des entraînements à ce manière pour ménager leur projet. Première neuf sessions ont commencé à Open Campus à l'Université West Indies là à Oman le 10 septembre. Officier qui a TB position pour le moment comme assistant secrétaire permanent au département des services publics, Betty Blanchard, explique que présentement l'année plusieurs projets qui a pris coup en service public PA et que quoi était nécessaire pour renforcer habilité ces officiers là pour faire eux plus capables de conduire travail. Facilitateur de ménagement projet à l'université à Betty Combi, dit que l'étonnement qu'a fait ses participants capables pour ça analyser trop plus fort et qu'un résultat qu'a ça éprouvé à ce projet qui est responsable pour. Selon Combi, ménagement projet à c'est un qui est très important. Il servit pour exemple il y a une cérémonie de mariage et qu'il y a un mariage même. Il dit que la cérémonie pour Maya, c'est un projet côté ménagement, projet à trouver attention, mais il dit aussi la nuit, l'autre façon qui est encore plus importante, et que ça c'est le travail qui est pour faire pour le projet à opération. Alors, à l'opinion professionnelle facilitateur, c'est un moyen de mariage là, c'est le projet à pas de mariage là même, c'est un moyen pour le en opération. Le projet à un commencement et un finissement. Il nous dit qu'il a toujours qu'il y un travail fait pour le projet en opération. L'officier qui a engagé dans la production plan de projet et qui est capable pour analyser le succès de ce projet là qui a improuvé la capacité aussi. Après, ces participants ont fini le projet et le là, ils ont reçu un certificat pour l'Université West Indies. Festival de mariage en bas de l'eau qui a fait bon progrès en cette ci 
comme madame et monsieur Julie et Sean, s'est monté à ce moment de mariage en Balamé. Le spectacle a été formé par des festivals de plonge en cette ici pour l'année 2019. L'activité ça a venu en réalité. L'année passée, les officiers des affaires voyage ont participé à des activités de plonge avec une discussion et les officiers touristes pour pour embrasser une initiative ça là et décider pour faire ça. Ils ont décidé pour faire ça. Des gens qui sont en train de la mer, sont en Ontario, en pays Canada. Après ce moment, le mariage là, parce que ce mariage là, il y a une célébration à Hotel Royalton, côté 22, même la famille est présente, et aussi les amis de l'Amérique. Uh, Julie Gilchrist et Sean Gillen disent qu'ils ont une passion pour la mer, pour plonger en bas la mer. Et c'est un qui a fait bonne relation et dit qu'il a mis la main et qu'il a aussi mis cette ici. Ce moment-là, le mariage a été conduit par un ancien plongé à l'hôtel Tikai, là c'est Lest Lawrence, qui a 14 ans d'expérience, mais malgré il n'a pas jamais conduit un mariage en bas la main avant ça, ce moment a passé très bien. Après le grand spectacle de mariage là, en bas la main, et puis Julie Gilchrist et Sean Glenn, Autorité des affaires touristiques a continué pour faire publicité pour qualité spectacle ça en diverses formes. Il y a aussi qu'à diverses festins des affaires touristiques. C'est l'officier des relations publiques, Jiren Georges, il a regardé pour faire cette ici euh, très solide comme une destination pour les étrangers visiter ou plonger à Balamé. Et c'est comme ça que nous avons une nouvelle aujourd'hui. Nous avons remercié autant pour regarder. Nous avons une invitation pour chercher comment considérer. Comment ça fait la vie? Nous avons une autre. Nouvelle à Coyol. Comme la coutume, je vous souhaite une bonne fin de semaine. Et après ça, je vous souhaite une bonne fin de Merci, Opil Primus. Et here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Partly cloudy to cloudy skies with scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms over the leeward and northern windward islands. Further south, fair to partly cloudy skies and a few showers. A tropical wave in the vicinity of the Lesser Antilles is expected to produce cloudiness, showers and isolated thunderstorms, mainly over the northern portion of the region today. Two other tropical waves located over the central and eastern tropical Atlantic are moving westward near 15 miles per hour or 24 kilometers per hour. These waves are being monitored closely as some development is possible during the next five days. The tide for Castries Harbour was high at 3.37 p.m. and will be low again at 9.08 p.m. The tide for Vieux Bay was high at 4.44 p.m. and will be low again at 10.35 p.m. The seas slide to moderate with waves 3 to 5 feet or 0.9 to 1.5 meters. The sun will rise Saturday at 5.52 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Trucks.